A five, six, seven, eight. What, what can I say except you're welcome? Really, guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah really. Definitely. Really? All right. I know you guys are all tired. We just have to make it back to camp, though. Breakfast will definitely be worth it. And I think it's a shortcut if we take... Oh, this trail. <laughs> that sunrise was worth the hike, but if I'm honest, I could eat a whale right now. Don't worry, guys. I have bacon, eggs, and biscuits waiting for us back at camp. Well, let's go then. <laughs> Hold up. What? We haven't been this way yet, so we need to be extra careful. I don't want any of you getting hurt. And that really kind of looks like... Eh, I think it's fine. Is that poison ivy? Oh, <laughs> poor Cory. <laughs> well, this reminds me of the next part of our story. Hey, Matt, why don't you hold that out of the way for us? Uh, you brought the anti-itch cream, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Oh, welcome guests. My wife, the lovely queen, and I would like to welcome you to our home. As you know, there is no greater kingdom than Babylon. Yeah! Since the time of our sixth king, Hammurabi, we have only grown stronger and more beautiful. Now that my predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, is good and gone, I'll be announcing plans to improve everything, <laughs> even his hanging gardens. Though I'm not sure how yet. Anywho, I brought you all here to celebrate my greatness, and I guess yours too. Yay! Woo! There's plenty of food and wine, so please, Dig in, drink up, and party on, Babylon. Yeah! Very nice speech, King B. Well, I do my best. My king, my wife and I just want to say how grateful we are to be here. Yes, it's such an honor and pleasure to celebrate with you. Well, you're quite welcome, I'm sure. Uh, yes, uh, my wife and I, Nobel persons that we are, we're wondering just exactly what these uh, improvements will be. You see, Nebuchadnezzar was a great king. When he took this throne, we had no idea the things he would accomplish. It's going to be hard to improve his hanging gardens. <laughs> well, just you wait, because we have uh, <laughs> big plans. Big secret plans. Yeah, so big, but so Secret. Shh. What could they be? Flying machines? A way to cure infections? Maybe bread you can buy in bags already sliced? No, 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 my dear. Do not be ridiculous. Those things are all completely unreasonable. Well, we're looking forward to seeing your secret plans. Yes, uh, of course. <sighs> Isn't this just the best? <laughs> oh, 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 yes, my king. You've certainly spent more than enough money on the feast. <laughs> yeah, almost everything here is the best that you have. Almost the best. Oh, oh, oh yes, you have the best food, the best wine, and... Uh... <laughs> and these chitsy cups. <gasps> what do you mean? Oh, it, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing. Are you kidding me? These cups are so cheap. Well... Well, don't we have better cups? I, uh, well, no, not really. <laughs> Which is weird in a kingdom that's so great. Wait a minute. We do have better cups. Mm -hmm. Cups fit for King Belshazzar. Everyone, listen up. I know, I know you're all very worried about the cups. It's the only thing that anyone talks about anymore. Well, don't worry. That's all behind us. I'm sending my servants here to fetch gold and silver cups. Ooh. 
cups from the temple of the Israelites. Whoa. You might remember that their God was the one who brought the ten plagues on Egypt and took down the great wall of Jericho. Whoa. All very impressive. But now, an even greater king will drink from them. Is, is, is that a good idea? <laughs> of course not. But since when does this guy listen to anybody? Come on, what are we all just standing around for? Let's get this party started! Woo! One, two, three, four. There's a party going on right here. A celebration to last throughout the years. So bring your good times and your laughter too. We gonna celebrate your party with you. Celebrate good times, come on. It's a celebration. Celebrate good times, come on. Celebrate. Celebrate good times, come on. It's a celebration. Celebrate good times, come on. All right, what's with all this commotion? You should all be looking at me. Ah, God is kind of making a spectacle here, isn't he? I think he got their attention. That's a good point. Why would God do something so outrageous? Wait. <laughs> what was the deal with the cups? Seriously? Really? No, seriously. What was the deal with the cups? Corey, there was nothing wrong with the cups themselves. It was the fact that the king thought he was equal or better than God. His attitude was the problem. I mean... Can you imagine thinking that you're just completely indestructible? Yeah, he does sound a little dumb, doesn't he? Corey, I think the story is supposed to be about humility and... Well, why don't you let him tell it? Corey, that's poison ivy! <laughs> eh, I think it's fine. <laughs> Still, maybe you should try to avoid it. Don't worry, I brought the big bottle of anti-itch cream. Good thing. As I was saying, in this next part, I'll explain why God was making such a big spectacle with the hand. <gasps> oh, my king, what happened? Oh, there was a, a big hand, and it wrote, that! Oh. oh, it was so scary. I wet my pants. Oh, what does it mean? It means I need new pants. Uh. Oh, the message? I don't know. Does anyone know what this means? Oh, what are we going to do? Okay, okay, don't be upset. Listen, there is a man in your kingdom, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh -huh. He put him ruler over all the magicians all the fortune tellers, he can decode anything. Dreams, riddles, he's on it. His name is Daniel. We renamed him Belteshazzar. He goes by Daniel. Daniel could help with this message. This sounds wonderful. This is great. Well, if anyone can tell me what this means, they'll be rich and famous. A gold chain. A purple robe. Fourth, no. Third in command of the kingdom. Anything you want. So somebody find this Daniel. I've already sent for him. Oh. My queen, how may I? Ah, Daniel. Danny. 
Dano! Dan Dan the Magic Man. I've heard that you are extremely wise and just chock full of the Holy Spirit. So I've brought you here to interpret this message for me. Nobody in my kingdom knows what it means, but you, you interpret dreams. You solve mysteries. So if you can solve this one, you'll be rich and famous. A gold chain, a purple robe, third in command of the kingdom, anything you want. That all sounds lovely, but you can keep all the gifts. I don't want them, but I will tell you what this means. God gave Nebuchadnezzar a great kingdom and made him a very powerful king. And if he wanted to make people important, he made them important. And if he wanted to bring them down, he brought them down. But because of this, he became proud and stubborn, which forced him to go away from his people, turning him into like a cow. <laughs> and all of these things happened until he learned that God Most High rules over all the human kingdoms and gives them to whoever he wants. I'm sorry. What does any of that have to do with the big scary hand? I mean, this is Daniel? <laughs> King Belshazzar! Ah! You knew all of this, and yet you refuse to worship the Lord who rules from heaven. You had these cups brought from his temple so you and all your tiny little friends could drink wine from them. You stand here and worship these gods of gold and silver who can't see, hear, or think, and you still refuse to worship the Lord who gives you breath and controls everything that you do. And that is why the hand wrote the message on the wall. Do, 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 you had choices. From the day that you were born, there were voices that told you right from wrong. If you had listened, no, you wouldn't be here today, living and dying with the choices you made. You'll be paying for the things that you have done, you can't escape this. No, there's no place to run. And all your idols won't save you here today. Living and dying with the choices you made. Living and dying with the choices you made. Now I will tell you what, these wor what the words on the wall say. Mene, mene, tackle Uparsin. And this is what they mean. Mene, that God has counted the days until he will take your kingdom. Tackle, that you have been weighed on the scales and found not good enough and do parson. He will take your kingdom, and it will be distributed amongst the Medes and the Persians. No. No. That can't be true. I've heard enough. Bring the gold chain and the robe. No one is greater than me. If only he was able to recognize the true king, even with all the riches and all the servants, not only him compares to the glory and the goodness of the one true King God. That very night, King Belshazzar was overthrown and killed. Darius the Mede became the new king. Well, that's harsh. What do you mean? I mean, did he really deserve to die? OK, well, that's a fair question. What do you all think? Well, you kind of breezed over the part about King Nebuchadnezzar going crazy and acting like an animal. Yeah, I did. Well, if King Belshazzar saw what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar, don't you think he should have listened? 
He was warned. That's why God sent that giant hand to write on the wall. How else would he have gotten Belshazzar to pay attention? Anti-itch cream? Oh, thank you. I hate to say it, but sometimes the best consequences are the natural ones. Okay, fine. I am allergic to poison ivy. I shouldn't assume I knew better than any of you. Relax, relax. You're not gonna die. And we all get to learn from your example. We haven't heard the big story yet. I'm sorry, what? We haven't heard the big story yet. She's saying we haven't heard the big story yet. Oh, yeah. No, don't worry. I'll get to that a little later. I mean, I think you all know it mostly. Mostly? Every kid who's been in Bible school for more than five minutes knows the story of Daniel and the lions. Okay, well, you'll, sw you'll see what I mean, all right? But for now, let's get Corey taken care of, because he, he looks itchy. At least I wasn't turned into a cow. <laughs> <laughs>